this is a dose. So if he was given it at school, this is what he would get. So we started cannabis and almost immediately he did better. His seizures were in better control. He was just starting to thrive and do so much better. We took him off. Some of the medications that weren't working were causing all the side effects. He's no longer on phenobarb, clonopin, onfi, steropental, Depakote, or Keppra. And since starting cannabis, we have been able to wean her completely off of Valium, which has been amazing. And she has really come into her own. She's very aware, and her eyes are so much brighter than they used to be. So it's, it's been an exciting year for us to see her come into her own and be this little girl that it's taken a really long time to see. Hi, my name is Matt Meister, Director of Communications with District 49. Our strategic plan, or our five big rocks, includes the Every Student Rock, which means District 49 will ensure that educational experiences are individualized, capable of launching every learner to success. These rocks are important, and along with our cultural compass are placed in our boardroom, enrollment office, and the entrances to our schools. Some of our students with severe special needs have medical conditions that produce frequent and severe seizures. I'd like to introduce you to several of them here and meet their moms, who have been on long and frequently difficult journeys to provide their children with a fuller quality of life. Do you like hanging out with your friends at school? <laughs> District 49 is in the process of discussing a policy that would provide the parents of these students like that have a documented and viable okay, medical needs the ability to administer cannabinoid products to their kids in a secure and controlled environment on our school campuses to reduce the severity and frequency of seizure activity. This video is part of the forum that we've built for community participation, an opportunity to discuss the proposed policy. We want to be authentic and transparent. I'm hoping that meeting these families and these kids will help contribute to an informed community discussion. Ava Lee has cerebral palsy, yeah. and she also has two different forms of epilepsy, um, which the newest one um, was just diagnosed about a year ago. She has been seizure-free um, for one year next week, so that's pretty exciting for us. And she's been on the CBD oils and cannabis for going on a year, so it's been a godsend for us and our family. Before we started cannabis, Ava Lee was on high dose Valium for about four and a half years, which really put her in a zombie-like state. She was very lethargic and incoherent and she just very moody and would not sleep at night. And since starting cannabis, we have been able to wean her completely off of Valium, which has been amazing. And she has really come into her own. She's very aware and her eyes are so much brighter than they used to be. So it's, it's been an exciting year for us to see her come into her own and be this little girl that it's taken a really long time to see. So we're excited that we're able to give her something so natural with such amazing side effects. I see, thank you. Oh, for Kitty, here you go Kitty. We use cannabis as a um, preventative for seizures. We use the THC when she starts getting lethargic and um, we see the onset of a seizure coming. Uh, so we'll give her just a dab of THC on her gums and she comes back to life. And it's, it prevents these grand mal seizures of her turning blue. She's never been in the category of having 100 seizures a day, but they still put her out for quite a while. So the the emergency seizure meds that we have now are things like the diastat and the lorazepams, which put her out for days. They just completely sedate her, and it's hard to bring her back. And with the THC and the CBD and the cannabis, it, it doesn't give her the harmful side effects, and it doesn't put her out for days. It, it just makes her be her again and allows her to do her thing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Is that for me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's wipe Kitty's mouth. Meow, meow. Can you wait? Let's get meow, meow, mom. Let's get meow, meow. Picture of Kitty. Gonna, we're gonna turn the turn the camera, and now you're gonna. 
Here. Mom. There's, who's that? Hi. Yeah, do you have questions for me, Avely? Yeah. What do you want to ask, ask me? There you go. Hi. Mom. Avely, do you like school? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. You love coming to school, don't you? And Mama. And Thank seeing you, Kitty. Mom. Thank you, Mom. Are you taking a picture of Mom? Thank you. Jackson has Dravet syndrome, and um, it's an intractable, catastrophic form of epilepsy. And um, he has seizures pretty much every day. We may go through a period where he doesn't have them for three weeks, and it's a huge blessing. But in the last 16 years, um, he has failed 62 different drug combinations, two brain surgeries. He's had the VNS implanted three different times. And he's also been on the modified um, diet treatment, which is the ketogenic diet. He's been on that three different times for a total of six years total. And it just isn't treating his seizures. Um, in 2012, we pretty much ran out of options. And the doctor pretty much said there was nothing left. There was nothing left for us to, to try to treat him. And it was pretty much almost like a hospice situation without using the word hospice. And um, the word cannabis was brought up. And we were asked, you know, maybe we want to try cannabis. Or three other drugs were mentioned. One had a side effect of blindness. The other one had a side effect of death, because the only other child who had tried that one particular drug had died. And then there was one other drug, and it had some other horrible side effect that was just really kind of scary. And so in New Jersey, cannabis was legal, um, but it was hard to get into the program. It wasn't a very workable program. So we started cannabis. And almost immediately, he did better. His seizures were in better control. He was just starting to thrive and do so much better. We took him off. Some of the medications that weren't working were causing all the side effects. He's no longer on phenobarb, clonopin, on fisteropentyl, Depakote, or Keppra, and also off the ketogenic diet. He doesn't have med flights. He was med flighted from school probably once to twice every month without fail, every single month, um, for a couple of years. And since we started cannabis, you think he's only had four med flights? And none since we've been here. Um, he doesn't have status seizures anymore. So the cannabis is a lifesaver for him. It is the only treatment that has ever worked since his seizure started at four months of age. Well, when he has a seizure, um, we have to basically follow a protocol. If it's longer than five minutes, he gets certain medicines, he has to leave the school, he has to go to the hospital. Um, they start reintroducing those drugs that we've had to take him off of. Um, one of the class of drugs he was on called benzodiazepines actually caused um, a huge addiction in him and also suicidal behaviors. Um, so my son with a very low IQ was actually trying to kill himself because he was so uncomfortable in his own skin. Um, and that's part of the reason why we did pull him off some of those drugs. Um, and with the cannabis, that's all gone. So if we follow that protocol, he goes to the hospital, they start reintroducing those drugs, we'll be back in the same spot we were um, with those drugs and, and the problems that we had at that point in time. Um, if this Jack's Law does pass and if we can go ahead and comply with it, I would ba basically be able to come onto the school grounds and I would be able to administer Jack's emergency meds which are cannabis-based, on the school, and I would be able to stop the seizure. I would avoid a hospitalization. I would avoid the ambulance and the, the whole thing that would come with it. And, and what triggers, and this is our experience from Jersey, is if he is re-exposed to the benzodiazepines, it'll probably trigger a 20-day hospital stay, where the addiction takes over, and every three days it actually triggers the seizures to re reoccur every three days as a withdrawal, almost like a heroin addict. So it's, it's really dangerous to have to go back to the pharmaceuticals, he's failed so much. So his primary diagnosis is spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. And his first diagnosis was microcephaly, which is small head, which just means all the parts of his brain are um, not as large as they should be. Um, so he doesn't have the brain damage, it's just lack of growth. This is fun. Is it fun? And then, um, so it kind of manifests as he has um, tightness in all four limbs. Um, he is nonverbal, but he does use a communication device and is pretty good with communicating with that. Um, he started having seizures at about seven months old, and that's never been our primary concern. Our main concern is pain control and body control. Um, so he's a, his main challenge has been just to stay comfortable, especially for school, to be able to sit and learn and not focus on being in pain or discomfort and be able to focus on learning a little more. Before we could give him the cannabis, he was on Valium, 
he was on a high dose of baclofen, which both make him tired and kind of, baclofen really slows down his thought process. As soon as you lower it, you see him speed up and you see him respond a lot faster. And then um, he just, he could sit for a little while, but he was constantly trying to move. He was um, trying to stand up when he's sitting and trying to sit down when he's standing. I mean, he just, that's what was his main focus <clears throat> was to stay. And he had constant startle seizures. So he would jump and kind of tighten and his arms were out to the side. So he couldn't really use his hands very well. He would be just uncomfortable. He's a lot um, louder verbally. He does a lot of yelling and screaming. Um, it's distracting. He was, he's removed from the classroom a lot when he, before he could have it. And he um, was just drowsy, kind of drowsy, didn't really participate much. That's awful. And, and spent a lot of time in the special ed room or out in the hall trying to regroup. Um, he had a really hard time controlling his volume. So you could tell him to lower his voice and to quiet you know, be a more respectable level for the other kids, and he just couldn't do it. His seizures are pretty controlled, but we've had, in the last two months, we've had a breakout of seizures between about 1 and 3 p.m., which is his last couple of hours at school. Um, I give it to him right before he leaves for school. I give it to him right when he gets home. And um, we used to have seizures in the evening time. We've never really had them at school. He's had his first one at school this year, um, probably last year too, just in the last few weeks. Um, so if, if he had an afternoon dose of the medicine, he would be a lot more relaxed through the rest of the afternoon. He's having a harder time sitting still in his last class. Um, he gets timeouts where they just pull him in the hall to regroup and then he goes back in. And that's been the class. If he's received any timeouts all day, it's been that last class. So if he was able to have a dose at noon, which they recommend you do three doses a day, we can only do two around the school schedule. Um, for some, he reacts differently to things. So if we give him CBD too late, he stays awake. He can't sleep, um, where it makes most kids tired, but he doesn't do what most kids do. Um, so I don't think we'd have those afternoon seizures if we could give a dose at noon. I wanted to give a dose at noon over spring break and just see if we could get rid of the seizures. But then I'm afraid when we go back to school and we have to stop that, we're going to see worse activity. So I hate to start something over the break and then send him back to school and have to stop it.